Alright, hello Polytopian. Thanks for tuning in as always. Here we are with a live game. Doing a replay of a multiplayer game between me and Tan11 Pan. This was a standard try versus Symanti game and a good example of how to counter Symanti players when playing as a standard tribe. Uh, we're using a turn zero start in this particular game and uh, that always gives you a very strong economic run and uh, the opportunity to spam out as much military as you want with the uh, the added backing of a strong economy to fund that and uh, further growth. Now, uh, early on, you can see I've gone with the uh, workshop here because uh, you definitely want to double down on that economic burden while you're at it. You can see uh, my opponent here, uh, Tan 11 Pan, as uh, Simanti also went for the workshop and is off exploring with their shaman early on. You can see I am pushing here, um, just going with more and more exploration. Just uh, climbing down a series of mountains. Meanwhile, so far, Tan has found his second village and is lining up to upgrade it. Unfortunately, Kofi, there, his second village, where the shaman is, didn't have any fungi. So um, he's had to get organization to be able to level that up. Which uh, does have a positive side in that he'll be able to level up Bioish 2 and then get the 5 star return as well. Which will help him snowball on his economic growth. But so far, unfortunately, it looks like he was hemmed in a little bit more than I was with uh, that early exploration. As you can see, I've got a decent bit more of the map revealed at this part already. There we are, another workshop. And getting some more exploration going. As you can see, I am moving on towards the third village now. Getting that explorer off, just to uh, reveal more of the map as we go. Seeing uh, about half of it at this point on turn five. Uh, Tan has gone ahead and gotten climbing too, so he can catch up in some uh, map views. And uh, we are starting to see some uh, boosted warriors off exploring. Off to our third and fourth villages very soon now. Uh, still working on getting those upgrades down, of course. Speaking of, there we are with the level up and the five star return. Now, as a standard tribe player, once you realize you're starting to play against Simanti, you're gonna realize you need some sort of uh, nice meaty melee unit to handle them. Now, the thing about Simanti is they're very tough, they're very fast on the offense, but they can be a bit of a glass cannon. So if you can get a unit that can soak up that damage and then retaliate afterwards, it's a lot more valuable than a glass cannon of your own that might get wiped out and be unable to work. It's just lost stars. So warriors are nice early on for this sort of role, but... Uh, you know, you need something stronger. And here you can see I've just really come to terms with the fact that I'm going to be playing a game against Simanti. That explorer was super useful, showed me a lot of the map there that I know he didn't see necessarily. And so, uh, obviously I'm a little worried about it, so I've gone ahead and just rushed forward to swords myself, which will be my beefy melee unit instead of going with uh, defenders and uh, strategy. You know, so I'm to push down towards cloaks, I've gone with swords as a meteor and heavier unit, not just something that can defend against an offense against me, but also a unit that would be capable of uh, doing some counter damage. And of course, I'm getting roads up so I can get reinforcements to the front line. Thankfully, I've got this wonderful little choke point I can hold them off at. And uh, that row of mountains also adds a nice little bit of defense right behind Luz Ray. So I'm continuing to push up towards Lomi, but not getting too far, and I just want to keep him pressured so he doesn't get a chance to really start uh, aggressively moving towards me. You can see Tan's already got shields up with uh, Chitons, which are very useful for uh, Simanti players. I'll be able to plug up my attack options into Lomi. So, certainly not against his favor at the moment. But uh, the real value of this push there will be if he can get to diplomacy and start rushing out cloaks towards me to see if he can counter me that way. So in the meanwhile, we've had a rushed boosted warrior run around the side of the lake here and uh, 
I've uh, had first contact with that. Meanwhile, I've been uh, focusing on investing in my eco, trying to snowball up more stars per turn, so when I do pivot more to a war footing, I'll be able to better fund it. We can see the chitons are moving up on the front lines, while uh, Tan is still working on trying to level up these cities. The uh, closer he can get to getting that first centipede out, the closer he can get to a successful siege of my forces. I see we've got riding out, so we can get some hexes on the front lines. As you can see, I'm rushing out more and more swords, just trying to meet those chitons in the middle. Meanwhile, Tana's, of course, trying to push out chitons of his own and getting that shaman in closer so he can boost that hex. Now, uh, that chiton attack on my swords, whilst it definitely pushed me back and is freeing up some population for him potentially down the road, uh, it isn't, you know, necessarily going to be the, uh, the most beneficial little push here that could have been made. Of course, uh, I'm still busily trying to explore and uh, expand around the lake where I see empty terrain and can level that up. And uh, Tan, in the meanwhile, is also trying to go around the side here, but um, now that he's kind of realized he's otherwise hemmed in, he's pushing for heavier and heavier units. And seeing that I have, uh, you know, swords of my own, he has decided to rush up some Dumux in an effort to be able to uh, more effectively push me back. Let's be honest, Dumux are very solid, very strong Simanti units. And uh, you can see that uh, sword push I put in there. Oh, yeah. I... Hadn't really thought about it, but uh, that sword was sitting on a vet when he went and killed the unit in front of Lomi. So uh, what was supposed to be just a four health sword that would be easy to kill on my end wound up backfiring because it wound up being a 20 health sword that got converted. Not, uh, not super beneficial for me. Not the end of the world, but super uh, a little silly on my end still. And we can see that first Dumux coming out of Kofi. Now, I'm sure it was initially meant to hit around Luzre, but, uh, you know, I'm, he's aware of the sword creeping towards him, and it's likely going to have to counter that. And over here, I have rushed some ranged support. You see, the nice thing is, we have this choke point I'm holding him up at around Luzre, and you want to look for natural choke points where you can put up a defense, especially when you're playing against a Simanti player. Over here, I got extremely lucky with uh, my spawn. I've got this wonderful range of mountains right behind Luzre where I can prop up some archers with a defense bonus who are able to shoot across this water channel, this, um, this very shallow channel of water, to hit the other side, the outskirts of the city of Lomi, which allows me to weaken his units without them being able to necessarily retaliate. Uh, he doesn't currently have the capability to make Rechi in this area, at least to my knowledge, and he also doesn't have the ability to put down uh, a bit of algae to connect the land bridge, so uh, I get this very nice spot where I can sort of kite ranged fire from my archers over the water without being at actual risk, and I can keep up uh, heavy troop forces around Luzre by just keeping up continuous production of swords. And you can see already those uh, archers are paying off rather well. And I'm able to uh, put up quite a bit of a horde of archers, you know, get some real range support going. And the swords continuing to push around there easily too. And uh, I am doing my best to just claim up all the free villages that I can see before uh, Tan gets a chance to get up there. Of course, I'm pushing out my uh, borders some more to try and prevent any algae bridges from uh, being formed outside of uh, Rechi explosions. And uh, we see our Dumux push here. Uh, that's intended to break through the lines and see if we can't take Luz Ray, I believe. Now, mind you, I'm aware of this, and I want to get rid of that Shaman, especially. He doesn't just have Dumuxes, he does have that Shaman in that perfect spot, so uh, even if I were to be able to get into Kofi, like what happened with my swordsmen, I would just promptly lose the city. So of course, Tan claims the uh, swordsmen and then blows up all of my offensive troops in an attempt to just push me back so he can give himself some breathing room and levels up his city. Border growth, which uh, gives him the opportunity to lay down an algae bridge, although he'd have to get the tech. Now you see here, I rushed out with my archer and my sword to make sure I could execute that shaman, thus preventing another uh, mind bend, and cleared up the weakened sword this time the way I uh, initially intended. And I'm of course moving up my range support, 
putting out some more and getting swords in range as well. And we're also going to take a little bit of stars per turn and return here as I continue to upgrade my economy across the board, try and do snowballing with those extra swords or uh, stars wherever possible so I can uh, keep the level ups continuous across the empire, ever important to build up my eco further. And you can see Tan over here has finally rushed out his first centipede, which is going to be a big problem for me, especially with two poison units in range. And here we have our second centipede in the back. It was quite a turn for centipedes. And of course, we have some constant exploration going on around the side of the lake too. Soon he's going to realize that I've pushed up basically to the border of his lands. Which, you now will be another spot of contention. And here we can see that wonderful uh, support across the water, a lot of range support in general coming out. And I am a, just trying to get in close so I can do damage to the centipede. I do want those units largely to die. Move the sword behind his city so at least his centipede would be out of place and it'd be easier to kill the rear segment. Once he did kill that sword, that was definitely going to die. So there we go, a little bit more border growth, and I am currently trying to set up a navy in an attempt to open up a new front to the war. And there we go, you can see his uh, centipede is now a little bit more out of place. We do have a couple more showing up though, and he's just gotten diplomacy, so we're likely going to see some cloaks and some daggers show up soon. Now, I am trying to build up my eco even further, and if we're going to bother putting up some ports, it's time to get some customs houses. So you can see I am building up in the background, just trying to set up an economy that can support both a land and naval war. Meanwhile, Tan is prepping up a centipede rush, trying to push for this village in the south here. And in general, just uh, trying to gear up for an attack that'll actually take and hold these right. Now, for my efforts, I am, uh, you know, having lots of success getting my uh, navy up and running, for the most part, and uh, we're definitely able to build up our economy a little bit more. The whaling helps out too, but alas, it's not enough necessarily at the moment to really make a huge difference. The extra income is definitely worthwhile, but uh, the pressure is still felt on loose ray, and I'm not able to really bring the offense anywhere else at the moment. And uh, Tan does this expansion by Afbod. I am assuming it's because he's realized he's not going to be able to take the village with the forces he currently has present in the area. Now I'm doing the usual, which is uh, range support across the channel on the centipedes, just trying to weaken them. I'm also clearing out some effort and taking this last free village. In the meantime, sword spam out by Loose Ray has been continuous. And uh, I've also been able to keep up uh, range support production too. And I'm starting my giant farming now, so we can get some giant battleships out ultimately, which should be able to uh, change the tide of the battle, which currently is not in my favor. There's uh, just quite a bit going on. I had to land that giant in an effort to keep him pressured out by Kofi, so I'd have at least one less centipede to worry about, and it seems to have worked out. But of course, we have more centipedes coming from Afpod, probably towards that brand new little village. So, first things first, we're just going to keep trying to whittle these centipedes down. I won't be able to start my counteroffensive with my swords and my archers until I don't have a horde of super units to worry about. So for the moment, it's about uh, just building up our economy by uh, putting up our customs houses to full ranks so we can begin to upgrade all of our new giants into giant battleships and then they can take part in some sieges. As you can see, I am aware that there's some coastal territory here, very much so now, and Afpod has become our number one prime target. And at this point, I can see largely the entire map. All those uh, explorers throughout the game were quite helpful in that regard. You can see uh, Tan is trying to keep up, but at this point, he really only has vision over like a third of the map. And he's still trying to take care of that giant, which really worked out, ate up a Dumux, and uh, has been keeping a centipede busy on the front lines, which is desperately needed. As you can see, that centipede push towards my archers did do some damage. However, uh, it put his centipede out of position in such a way as to make it easy for me to cut down and eliminate that centipede, leaving only two on the front lines for me to have to realistically worry about right now. In the meantime, of course, my fleet is still building up and developing. Now, I need aquatism before I can really pose a big threat 
because uh, any, you know, coastal units will take a lot of damage, and out by lose ray, that's still a problem. And as you can see, we've got uh, cloaks on the way, dumux, and centipedes coming near lose ray. My uh, front lines are taking quite a beating this whole time through. Same in Lonuma. This was actually a turn where I thought I might have lost the game. However, uh, I was uh, fortuitously lucky. Uh, my range support and my buildup of swords was more than capable of countering the buildup of centipedes and retaking the city. And my uh, buildup in the south with my uh, navy allowed me to counter the attack on Lonuma, which, uh, you know, led uh, to a little bit of uh, frustration, I believe, on Tan's part, certainly. Um, you're trying to push in and take over all this territory. And unfortunately, things just aren't working out. As you can see, that Raichi wasn't able to get out and do too much. He did push back into Lonuma again, but he's largely in the same position where some battleships will get in there and do some damage. And even with, you know, those cloaks getting off and landing in some uh, daggers, unfortunately, the area is just a, uh, a hedgehog's nest. Now, uh, there's just spikes, swords, and uh, archers everywhere. And unfortunately, my fleet's more than capable of taking care of that uh, attack from the centipede, and I can even hit the Dumux before it gets in close, doing some damage so it really doesn't get a chance to fill out its uh, great potential. And of course, I'm keeping up sword spam and using my archers to do as much damage as possible, um, preferably if I can't kill a centipede to the head of the centipede, so it's less capable of getting kills of its own. And I am constantly building up my fleet in the background so I can uh, continue to push. The goal is now to siege Afpod so I can open up a new front. Meanwhile, Tana's, of course, rolling in more cloaks, getting in more daggers, and trying to push his uh, centipedes in further and further into my territory, both to attack around Luz Ray and distract me from being able to defend effectively. I also see some Exedas showing up for the first time, trying to get some real range support, and that splash damage will be super useful, especially from a range. And uh, there's just not a whole lot I'm able to do right there about it. However, I am well aware of what he's pulled off. So step number one is making sure we destroy the remaining centipedes in the front line and then wipe out as many of our cloaks as possible, or daggers, which we are effectively able to do. Then the Siege of Afpod happens and I land a giant in there. I also uh, move a little bit more naval presence into the area. And uh, I also snipe out those Exedas, well, the one Exeda I can reach before it's effective. And I also move in some uh, warrior ships just to uh, weaken that Dumux so it uh, isn't able to do as much damage to my battleship if he decides to hit me. Now that one Exeda does get a shot off and he attacks with his warrior, but I get lucky because I think the push was indeed on Luz Ray. And although he's able to level me out, uh, when that Dumux goes boom by loser, he moves his centipede in. Um, that leaves my giant battleship able to still effectively hit with full force. And uh, I am able to resiege Afpod fairly simply and then uh, push him with some swords whilst I eliminate all opposition. I don't even need to use my battleship to save loser. I've got more than enough archers in range. And my battleship's able to clear out all effective resistance, meaning I can land some troops right on close up. At this point, it's also looking like maybe knights might be useful for uh, especially reinforcements around Lonuma to Afpod side. And of course, our fleet is continuing to build up. We've got Aquatism at this point, swords and uh, giant battleships in the water, so things are going quite well on that front. Now, uh, things are not going well by Luz Ray. The front is sort of breaking down entirely. Land forces are hitting by water. As you can see, we are claiming cities like Afpod, which opens up a brand new front towards Bioche. And uh, it's honestly around this time with the loss of Lomi and uh, Afpod in the south that the uh, game is kind of officially lost at this point. Um, it, was, it was a rough fight, but uh, there's not a lot to push back for. And at this point, the momentum's in my favor. I've got ships able to land and take out that first room of cities. I'll have knights in to be able to clear out multiple units earlier. 
and a lot of those uh, naval forces I had embarked, I'm able to land and effectively have a uh, ground force right there, uh, much faster than otherwise would have been able to invade. So I've got swords and archers already ready to go. Mind you, they are heavily poisoned still, and taking a lot of damage in the early confrontations, but um, there's just not a lot that uh, the Simanti player's gonna be able to do against me here. Um, you know, at the end of the day, the uh, the main fight was made to try and take Luz Ray, and that did not pan out the way it was uh, desired. From here on out, it's just mop up. You know, uh, I've got a uh, more than enough naval power in this area to just crunch through and uh, keep pushing on cities, with the final capital really being the only obstacle left for me. But Final Exita is not really going to be a problem because I'm able to more than effectively get in range and do some damage at this point. And again, we've got more swords landing just in case it's needed. And that Exita is continuing to go for as much damage as possible from a range. Making uh, Hexapod was a fine choice. At this point, Tan had uh, finally resigned, so uh, we are seeing the bot do some rather silly things, like uh, trying to defend a city with a hexapod, and, uh, well, that's sort of why the uh, end of this game steamrolls quite so quickly, because uh, as good as the bots have gotten, they still haven't gotten all the way to uh, the point where they could uh, convincingly replace a human being. And uh, it's just some silly things. Again, like uh, making a hexapod on the front line in front of an enemy sword. Where, um, you know, that's a guarantee that you're going to lose. Uh, keeping an Exita, a wounded Exita in a city too. But uh, yeah, overall, that's how you would uh, counter a Simanti player as a standard tribe player. The real gist of it is you want some meaty melee units like swordsmen up in the front lines who are able to soak up damage while continuing to deal it back. You also want to find a choke point, a place where you can support them where you have natural defense in your area, like this spot around Luz Ray, where I was able to put archers across the water and on the mountains behind the city to provide constant fire support against all the multiple invasions. Meanwhile, in Luz Ray itself, I was able to pump out those meaty swords who were able to soak up damage while dealing it, conversely, at the same time. And, uh... There just wasn't a lot Tan could do, although he was pushing quite hard, and at one point it looked like he was ready to win the game. I mean, Luz Ray and Lonuma were both ready to fall, and from there the rest of my defensive line would have crumbled. Uh, Luz Ray was uh, a very nice spot to hold, and it would have been very difficult for me to get it back from Tan, even though I had a lot of power in the area. He uh, very easily could have just rushed Dumux up from Kofi and Lomi, put down an algae bridge in that one spot of water there that's uh, open between my ports to uh, accelerate his Dumux's reinforcements in. Again, it's just not a lot I could have done to uh, keep the city. And uh, with those spores that were founding too, he would have been more than capable of leveling it up, giving another centipede in close proximity, which could have hit any of the uh, surrounding cities, such as Mamus, Doropi, Kare or Madote, so it really did come to a close edge. The um, the differentiating factor was just that chokehold being in my favor, and I was able to pump out enough range support and swordsmen to uh, hold the gap while it was needed, as well as sneakily get the, uh, that navy set up in the uh, north, or yes, sorry, the northwest here, or uh, really the western area of the map here which was able to uh, strike down towards the south where Afpod was and uh, really turn the tide of the battle on its head. Uh, after Afpod was lost, I was able to start landing naval forces right out by Bioish, which left Lomi very much so uh, surrounded and broken, although Lomi fell right around the same time. And uh, ultimately, it uh, again came down to a uh, mix of swords and archers, even uh, with the landing invasion forces. And I think that's uh, something you're going to see be a little bit more consistent in Diplomacy Beta. That uh, combination of swords and archers is uh, quite powerful, not something to be underestimated. Anywho, that'll pretty much wrap up our game. And I do hope you enjoyed watching, and uh, thanks as always for tuning in. I gotta say it was quite a good game, and... Uh, I thank Tan and Eleven Pan for joining me and got to give many props, you know, quite a skilled player.